Imagine Christmas is over. All the programs have been performed. All the pictures have been taken. The carolers are done singing. The holiday parties have come and gone. The presents are unwrapped. And the big dinners have all been eaten. The Christmas music is turned off. The family's headed back home. Someone from work is on the phone. The kids have a practice to get to. The house needs to be cleaned. The bills still need to be paid. The groceries are running low. The stock market is still down and up and down. The TV is still on. The news is still worrisome. Life just keeps going as if Christmas never happened. But it did happen. Look around. The church is full of family and friends and laughter. Because the baby is still the Savior. And the Savior is still the gift held out to a world still looking for joy, an earth still waiting for peace, and the peaceful still sing in wonder of the God who gave his son, and the son who gave his life to add us to his family, and one day welcome us home. Imagine Christmas is over. But remember that it really happened. And it changed everything. Well, it's only about 360 days until Christmas. Maybe not yet, but soon, I'm sure, you'll be taking down your Christmas trees, you'll be putting your ugly Christmas sweaters back into the box, and if you haven't done so already, the rest of the Christmas treats and goodies will be eaten, and life will go back to the same old, same old. But we know that Christmas is not about the lights or the trees, the turkey, or even the time that we spend with our family and friends. Christmas is all about the light of the world, the true light that brings hope and peace. John 1.9 says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The light is actually a person, and we get to celebrate him coming into the world at Christmas. And although life will get back to normal, and in a few days it may seem like Christmas just went by in a blur, or maybe it'll seem like Christmas didn't even happen, it did. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The baby we celebrate is still the Savior. And Jesus is still the gift held out to the world. John 1:12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We need to remember all year through that the light of the world has come. He's the gift held out to the world, and when we receive that gift, we become children of God. As much anticipation and buildup as there is around Christmas, Christmas is not an isolated event. The incarnation is not an isolated event. It was the beginning of Christ's work of redemption. And just as we begin to transition back to the normal, everyday life, 
As we leave the decorations and festivities behind, we need to remember the importance of Christmas and the events that it brings forth all year through. Jesus, God in the flesh, that little baby in the manger, goes on to experience much of the same old, same old as we do. Jesus had to study. We read that in Luke 2. Jesus, when he got a little older, worked as a carpenter. He experienced hunger and tiredness. At times, Jesus was frustrated with people who rejected him and misunderstood him. He went through temptation and even the rejection from his own earthly family. He experienced many of the same things we do in our daily routines and the same old, same old of life. Jesus can empathize with us. When we get bogged down in the daily routines and struggles of life, we need to remember that God's loving providence is all over us. We need to remember that the baby at Christmas is still the Savior today and every day all year long. Well, shortly after the very first Christmas, we read of the events that follow just days later in Luke chapter 2, 22 to 23. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of Moses, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. What a fitting response in the days following Christmas to offer ourselves in consecration to the Lord. The gift of Jesus, the Savior of the world, is presented as a gift back to God. It's a very interesting detail of the Christmas story. But as we close out 2023 and head into a new year, I wonder, have you consecrated yourself to the Lord? Have you accepted the gift of Jesus as your Savior and declared that Christ is Lord? May you consciously commit yourself to the Lord this new year. This new year, dedicate or rededicate yourself to God. Give God your time this year. Give God your talents. Offer him your family and your home. Present yourself as a gift to the one who came for you. And this year, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the wise men, and the peace of Christ all year long. Amen.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love for us. And as Josh has reminded us of the importance of giving ourselves over to you, we pray that as individuals, as families, as a church community, that we would live in that manner in 2024. May we have impact as we seek to bring glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus, you are at the very core of uh, our identity and our living, and we just pray that you will be very pleased with uh, how we live for you in this coming new year. We ask for your blessings now, in Jesus' name, amen. And just to remind you, uh, next week uh, we will gather here at Byron Community Church for a prayer and share time. It will also include communion. So we look forward to seeing you on January 7th. And then on January 14th, we will begin a new series as we look at the Epistle of James. Have a great day, a great weekend. God's blessings. <laughs>